So let me see. Um, I'm going to start straight to my presentation, and then I'll introduce myself later. Um, I titled the presentation Open Sourcing Your Value Chain because this is yeah. a little bit actually what we are trying to do with uh, Fairphone since we started already as an initiative four, five years ago and as a social enterprise since 2013. But I'd like to start with that question, what is a value chain, right? It's, it's, a, it's a chain of successive moments in which different parties increase the value of a product, increase the value of something. What we see is that, so that's how you <laughs> increase the value. What we see is that um, those value chains are very intransparent. So we often say, we often know what's the price tag of uh, things, but we don't know what's behind, how it's made. It's all these systems that we untrust because they are intransparent. And we can talk about manufacturing, like a supply chain or value chain, but we could also talk about software, terms and conditions that we sign every day. We may even think that it is only us poor customers that we don't know about this stuff. But the truth is that uh, in 2013, when Rana Plaza collapsed, that's eight floors um, clothing um, workshop, uh, with 1,000 people dead, 2,500 injured, not even the big apparel companies knew that they were producing in that factory. So they didn't even know where to point their fingers at. We know what is the price of producing in Bangladesh, but what is the value of 1,000 people dead? Or what is the devalue? We know the price of everything, but we know the value of nothing, I think. It is like the tragedy of the commons. The benefit is enjoyed by a few lucky ones, but the impact is shared with everybody. Because it is those systems that are intransparent that make this happen. But what can we learn from the open source movement? We, as a brand that manufactures a mobile phone. We can learn about creating systems that people are part of, that people own, that people can modify, that people understand how they work. And that's what we are doing with Fairphone. We get to a system, we understand it, we map it, we document it, we share it, and we try to transform it or we expect that somebody else also transform it. So this is how we started Fairphone. Um, mobile phone brands, you may ask yourselves why a mobile phone? We can talk about that later. Um, a brand that is sketchy from the beginning, that is always in beta, that is a platform for change, that invites everybody, customers, suppliers, to join and try to make a smartphone fairer. And we do that by means of transparency. Um, when we started uh, five years ago as a campaign, campaigning for, um, to bring on the agenda and bring on the table the conflict minerals issue, people were just scared of it. People didn't understand it. We wanted to make it tangible, to put it on the table, to make people understand what it is. So conflict minerals are four minerals that come from the east of Congo and surrounding company, uh, countries. Um, which trade fuels a horrible, um, unofficial war, I would say, that has killed millions uh, in the last years. But what if we can find organizations there that are already doing the right thing, that are using bag and truck to track uh, uh, the mines that are clean, let's say, without uh, undermining the, activity, the economic activity of the country? What if we can map them and we can bring them on the table, we can show to consumers, we can show to the whole industry how this works, how can we make this, war hap this uh, happen. We make it tangible through making products. So that tin and that tantalum from those two mines that are conflict-free are in our first mobile phone, among other projects. I don't know how to explain the pride of organizations to be part of these initiatives. It's not only Fairphone, it's all our partners. And the pride that they show when, when we explain the initiatives, when we explain what we are doing, it's amazing. So it's about creating that transparent system. We did 14 and Tantalum, we are doing the same for Tuxten. We've, we're mapping the situation, we've gone all over the supply chain, and 
most likely it will end up in our vibration mechanism for Fairphone 2. We're doing the same with gold, and we're doing the same in other activities, worker representation in China, uh, our electronic waste project in Ghana. But we are also present lobbying for the right legislation in the European Union. We go to OCDE meetings. We are everywhere. Sometimes we need boots, sometimes we need ties. Sometimes you can be a bit more informal, like here. We publish everything we do, like the cost breakdown for Fairphone 1. But everything makes it possible because we have a product, because we are a company, because we are a client, because we are a brand, because we are in the middle of the system that we want to change. And you cannot do only one thing. Uh, they tend to say that when you try to fix something, you're breaking something else, right? That's why it's so important for us to be a brand, to be in the middle of the system and affect all the supply chain, or try to. I have something very exciting, which is Fairphone 2, which is about to start sales very soon. What you see now on the screen, you probably don't see anything, but it's just a scheme of our supply chain. With Fairphone 2, thanks to all the buyers, if there is somebody in the room, for all the buyers of Fairphone 1, we've been able to develop Fairphone 2 for one year and a half. And we've been able to start mapping the supply chain much further than we could even imagine. We are now at third tier. And that's just a brief scheme. So this is what we are building. Well, I have a prototype here. Um, it's a modular architecture. So uh, in the first phone, we did a lot on the supply chain. Second phone, we are um, focusing on the design of the phone, besides all the projects before. So it's easy to repair, it's easy to maintain, hopefully, hopefully it's also easy to understand so that you own it and you keep it for as long as possible. And as I say bye to you, I want to show you how easy it is to change the screen, if I can. Um, but I want to also thank again all the community because it is thanks to them that we are today a company in Amsterdam with 40 people working, and we are completely independently financed by them. And it's because of that, this is just a prototype, huh? <laughs> it is because of that that we can do things like this. We can make, <laughs> this always happens, right? In presentations. That we can make products that you can open and that you can change, hopefully in the future even much more than now. So if you drop your screen and you break it, we can just send you a new one and you can replace it yourself. Let's do that, all of us in our industry. Let's build systems that people can own, understand, change, and be part of. That's all. Thanks. I just want to add that there is a very cool thing downstairs, which is ask me anything. So speakers go there, um, and you can ask them anything. So I'll be there in a while. Uh, so if you have any question, we can take it there. Thanks.